Making sure that your van or RV electrical system has plenty of airflow is important so that your equipment doesn't overheat. And last week, I showed you how to control fans from a Serbo GX so that they can turn off and on based on temperature so that they're only running when needed. But I also know that not everybody has or needs a Victron Servo GX in their electrical system and they're kind of pricey. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do pretty much the same thing with a $15 12 volt DC thermostat. Let's get started. So here is the thermostat that we are using for this setup and I've already pre-wired it. And let me show you how I've wired it and then we'll show you the programming for how we want it to work. This positive and this negative are delivering power to the thermostat. Power is coming from this uh, DC power supply I have off screen, but in a real setup, you're probably gonna have these connected to the far right studs of the Victron Lynx distributor, getting power from the battery bank. So we've got negative coming to the chipboard and then we've got positive coming into this lever nut and one of them is powering the thermostat itself and the other is coming out and through the switch part of the relay. These two terminals are simply connecting or disconnecting these two wires whenever the temperature gets to the temperature that we're going to set here in a minute. And then power is going out to our positive wires, to our fans, and then power is coming from our fans through the negative wires back to our DC power negative, which would be the far right negative stud of the Lynx distributor. So that's how this is wired. It's important to note that there's a fuse here. Uh, it's a three amp fuse. This particular thermostat is rated up to something like 10 amps, but each of these fans is only pulling like 0.1 amps, so we can use a really small fuse here. This, all this is, is the temperature sensor with the little temperature sensor probe on the end. Now for programming, there are three buttons right on top. And to set the programming for this, the, we simply push the one that says set right here on the far right side until this bottom changes to the level that we want it to change to. So we'll set it to 80 degrees. Now it's 66.8 degrees in here right now. We've just set this to turn on when it turns to 80, but the fans are on, which means this is a reverse function of what we actually want it to do. Now the instructions are <laughs> pretty poor to be totally honest, but yeah, it's pretty simple to change this. Uh, you just press and hold the set button until P0 shows up there, and then press the plus or minus button right over here to change that to C, which means you're changing it to a cooling fan, and those fans turn off. Now you leave it alone for a second and it's going to go back to this menu where it's showing the 66.5 degrees of the actual temperature right here, as well as the 80 degree set point. Now got a heat gun here and we're going to heat up that uh, temperature sensor until it gets to 80 degrees to make sure that the fans turn on. So as soon as it crossed over the 80 degree mark, the fans turned on and now we'll let this cool down to below 80 degrees to make sure that the fans turn off. And we just crossed over the 80 degree mark and the fans turned off uh, exactly how we were wanting it to. So you just want to mount this somewhere in your electrical enclosure, uh, probably close to the top since heat rises. And then yeah, the fans are just going to turn on when it gets too hot and turn off when the enclosure cools down. And you can kind of play around with the temperature of which works best for you in most cases. I would say probably somewhere in the 90 to 95 uh, degree range. Uh, you know, on this thing, you can change this in smaller increments by pressing the up or the positive and negative or the plus and minus buttons over here. Uh, but yeah, I just play around with that temperature so that these aren't running all the time, uh, but make it so that your stuff isn't getting um, 
overheating warnings. So that's pretty much how you set this up. Pretty low cost solution that should work pretty good for most needs. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.